Hey, hey, everyone. It is your favorite CEO, Miss Flo, and welcome to another episode of Neon Mike, where the conversations just glow. Today, I, you know what? I have to say, the majority of my guests now, it just makes me really appreciate social media because I'm just meeting more and more interesting people um, that are willing to come on the show and just talk about the great things that they're doing. But I'm going to let my guests go ahead and introduce themselves. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Cutting. My artist name is Get to Cuddle. I'm a up and coming mangaka from the Cleveland, Ohio area, and really thankful to be here right now. All right, and thank you so much for reaching out. Uh, you know, we met. I think it was the a uh, group chat, Black Future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we like we were just con connected through there and. Um, I was looking at your Instagram page and you are a solar consultant and part of like lifestyle marketing. So you can tell me uh, a little bit about that. Yeah. So I've been in the field of direct sales, like since I graduated high school. So I got involved with solar April of last year. And basically what we do is we help families get solar as a form of power for their home rather than paying like high increasing rates with the current utility situation. Oh, wow. The planet thanks you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was just curious, is it only families? Do you work with like apartment buildings, like a home? Like what is the uh, prerequisite to be eligible for this program? So in Ohio, Right now and over here, we're just doing residential. I know in some other places there is like commercials where they may like work out agreements with an apartment building or, you know, other type of like commercial type structures. But right now in Ohio, it's just on a residential level pretty much for like the field that I'm in. And how does it, how much does it cost to have those solar panels? Because I've always been interested in that. Yeah. Um, so it was just uh I live in a condominium and we have been okay. talking about um doing solar panels um just to cut down the cost of our you know electric bill and things like that. But we are also concerned like how much it would cost to you know to put on the roof. So like how much does construction cost? Is there a payment plan? Like how does that work? Yeah, so in every state, like I think it literally is different, but over here. If the condominium, I believe if like the roof of it is owned by the individual living there, you are able to get the panels installed on the roof to answer the first part of your question. The second part is it's not like possible for families to get solar now to where you pay nothing out of pocket. I'm like over here doing my pitch. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so basically it's like you'll have everything installed. You pay nothing. And the idea of it is you're literally just going to be doing a bill swap. So rather than you pay like, What's the um, utility company in your city? Pepco. So like, yeah, imagine, rather than you paying them, like you just swap the, swap that out for a cheaper monthly solar payment. Oh, okay. I get it. That's smart. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to like pay like a thousand dollars. Correct. Like budget. It's just like, it's broken up over time through yeah, like your so, monthly bill. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, it literally is just a simple bill swap. I got it. I got. I like that. You know what I mean. Um, and you go green and you save green, so it's it's a win win situation. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So I also saw on your Instagram page, uh, that you also help like like a business consultant. Like you, I've seen like posts about doing elevator pitches. Like, are you also helping upcoming entrepreneurs and small businesses? Yeah. So before I got in, involved in solar, I was in the um, network marketing industry and a lot of people I think have a misconception about network marketing a lot of people like use the term pyramid scheme or things of that nature but it really doesn't even it really doesn't even work that way it's it's a it's a situation where it's like we all go to Walmart and Target right mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're buying stuff from Walmart and Target right right but you're not getting paid for things that you buy from Walmart and Target. So all you're doing like in the field of network marketing is you're just switching your buying power. So rather than you like go to the big name box stores, you now just switch this to where 
you know, the purchases that you make and you actually get like percentages of things off and you help other families be able to just, it's, it's kind of like solar. You're just doing like a, a transition in terms of like the spending power, your buying power, you take it back and you get paid for it. So I think that, um, I mean, I'm not currently involved with it anymore because solar just takes up a lot of my time. And like, I had to just invest my, my resources here. However, it's like for, you know, any young person or just someone in general who's like looking for another stream of, of income, like network marketing is a very powerful field that I think that there's just a huge misconception about how that industry works. And how did you get into it? You said like you started in, you know, right out of high school. How did you dive into this field? So my dad has, my, both my parents have been entrepreneurs pretty much my entire life. Um, they, they've been in network marketing since the time I was like seven. I remember like being at aunt, my aunt's house, other people's house, going to meetings and, you know, th things like that. So when I turned 18, I knew that I wasn't going to college. I, that just wasn't for me. So I'm like, okay, I'm not doing this. And so my dad said, hey, you either got to, you got to work or, you know, you got to go to school. So I knew school wasn't an option. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to come work with you. So my dad has been in like I said, the direct sales space for just a pe pretty long period of time. So when I jumped into direct sales, we first started with newspaper sales. So I'll be like in retail stores, you know, getting people the Sunday paper or like the weekend special. And then after that, we transitioned to wind energy and then I got into solar. So just through my parents is like how I got into this industry. Right. Why was the why did you switch over from wind to solar? Like what is the the big difference? Well, besides like the sun and wind, but was like what is yeah. the uh like the overall difference? What made you want to switch? So it actually wasn't a choice. It was something that actually was forced upon us. So a year ago, like honestly around this time, the company that we worked for gave us a notice that, you know, they're just terminating us. And oh. <laughs> it was just yeah, so it just was like that. So we had a we had to make a decision. So we didn't know if we were going to go like to just another energy type supply partner with them, or, you know, we found out about solar and it was new. It's like, I, I never thought I would be in the solar. It wasn't like no pre pre like plan put together for this, but we decided to go this route. And, you know, I'm just very thankful for it because it's, it's worked out very well for us. Well, that's good. Well, I think this, your story is more so like, the the main reason why I think a lot of people want to start their own business, not have their fate in like somebody else's hands, but just to kind of be in control of their own destiny, you know. So I totally get that. Um, and now in terms of like helping other businesses, uh, you I saw a post about like you doing like an elevator pitch. Uh, what are some advice to businesses when they're trying to? um sell their idea to investors yeah so actually like the elevator pitch actually was for i was really speaking about that in terms of like manga but it kind of applies to the same like principles in the in the realm of business so i think if you have like an idea the whole concept of the elevator pitch is like you have like this 30 second interval of time to where you want to be able to spit this idea to a potential investor so if you saw like jeff bezos on the elevator and you want to like try to get him to take a look at your opportunity you want to hit like on just five key points you know you want to have your you know your idea of course which is going to be the beginning and then you're going to have okay what the product is what what does the product do how is this going to help people and then you want to have a plan about how this is going to turn into revenue. So you want to be able to hit those in like an increment of a 30 second time period to be able to catch the attention of an investor. Cause that's all the time you're pretty much going to have on the elevator. Right. Right. <laughs> right. For sure. And um, what advice do you have for upcoming entrepreneurs? Because I myself have my own publication. I am good okay. with, you know, uh, content creation. Yeah. But the business side of it is something that, like, I kind of struggle with. So, like, what advice do you have for somebody? Because, like, I'm actually meeting more people that has the same dilemma with other creatives and content creators. Like, they're really good at what they do. But in terms of, like, the marketing side and the business side of it is always a struggle. And, you know, they try to find people, the business people, but it's like, it's, it's hard for them to trust the right yeah. business person. You know what I mean? So like, what advice do you have for them? 
So I am no different than everybody else. This is something that I am literally figuring out right now myself. It's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of like just gaining a lot of experience, but also not like outsourcing all your resources at the same time. So I would say that's probably the biggest advice that I could give is before you make a decision, really be 100% sure this is the way you want to go. I mean, I've like shelled out several thousands of dollars when I was like involved in music or, you know, other different avenues that, you know, I've been a part of in my life. And just knowing what I know now, I would have navigated differently. You know, when we have like an idea, you know, it's like we're so excited. We're ready to like, you know, go to the moon with this idea. However, it's, there's different steps, you know, it's different like peaks of elevation that you have to hit. So you don't want to just rush and, and throw like all this money into this when you don't really have the the marketing, like you were saying, the fan base or the people to really like back up and support what you're doing. So that's like the biggest advice I could give is build slowly, but also build steadily. Digital marketing is so powerful. This is something I learned from my mentor where if you literally just make contact with 15 to 20 random strangers a day, just politely reach out to them, people that are already interested in whatever you're looking to push. So, you know, if you're starting a baking company, you obviously want to follow like the pages of successful bakers. And then you want to politely DM the people that are supporting them and let them know like what you're doing. And you'll get a percentage of these people who will purchase your products. So that's like, to me, like the most like economical way to do it is you just have to make that connection. A lot of people, I feel we get in our heads so much to the point where like, oh, man, this person is just going to blow me off. Why would I even do it? No, I think I get what you're saying. Rejection is hard, but it's just like you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take. Absolutely. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's okay. Like, and this is something I tell my students when we're doing interviews and reaching out to people. The worst thing they can say is no. Yeah. Unless they're like, like super rude about it. But, uh, but for the most part, you'd be surprised like how many people are willing to reach out, talk to you, um, yeah. be impressed by what you're doing. It is a valuable life lesson. And be, and I'm glad you mentioned like DMing because most of the time on social media, we rely on, and this was my, like, mistake the first year I started. It was just like, oh, like, if I post a whole bunch of stuff on Instagram, the people will follow. They'll see it. And it's just like, the algorithm is constantly changing. Um, it, that, you know, I mean, one thing could, you know, have 10,000 views, and then the next one, it's like 10. So it's very up and down, hit or miss. But I found recently just being in certain spaces, like going to the cons and certain parties and really letting people know what I do and what I'm about, then that's when, you know, I also am start like gaining the followers and talking to And again, we met through a DM, like we met through we a group chat, you know what I mean? That's so like it's, the advice is real people. It's true. It works. You're literally watching it right now. But which also brings me, it's like, how did you end up in the Black Futures group chat? Yeah, so basically what had happened was I made a connection. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, I think it's Jay Moore. I think I think Jay Moore, um, he's, he's a comic artist out in Florida. And I, I liked his, we like followed each other on Facebook, you know, through another like group and I really liked his work, you know, and then I just DM'd him like, hey, man, how long you been working? And then he let me he let me know. We started like building conversations. Um, I bought his comic. He bought mine. And like we just built a relationship and he invited me into into the group. And yeah, I mean, it's been really cool connecting with you. Like we have a lot of other really talented people in that group. And, you know, I just do my part to make connections, you know, genuine connections, you know, share stuff when, you know, people ask me to do so. And I think it's I think it's just so important, like people don't understand the power of just making a genuine connection to where you're literally not expecting nothing back from this. You're literally just doing it off the love. You just want to connect with people. You want to hear their story. You want to know like what got them to where they are. You know, like, you know, when we're when we were talking offline, you know, I learned more about you in terms of like what you're doing, you know, what what you're looking to build. And I think that that stuff is 
something that I don't feel too many of us are really doing to make a genuine connection. It's always like, what's in this for me? Right. It's almost very selfish in that sense. Yeah. It's like, how can I use or get something out of a person? But in reality, it's like, we can help each other out. You know? Build that nest together and, like, really, you know, make an impact. Um, you mentioned that you have your own comic book. Are you a writer, uh, artist? Yeah, so I'm a writer. I wish I could draw. I really I really do. But, um, yeah, so... I'm a I'm a mangaka. I've been working on my story One Nation for almost six years now. I just released my first piece of work two months ago, my one shot. So, I mean, this is something that I didn't know that I was gonna do. Honestly, I mean, I've been a fan of anime since I was a kid. However, it's like I never really had the idea to to make one. You know, one day I was out in Detroit for my birthday with my cousins and some of his friends, and they put on Neo Yokio, which like for people who know, that's something like, like Jaden Smith was a part of. And then I was like, Jaden Smith can do this. I can do this. And right. then I just started like writing and I never stopped. So it's it's my biggest it's my biggest passion right now. And the thing that, that drives me the most right now in my life. Can you tell us what your comic is about? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. So basically the one shot is about a girl who... Actually, I'll, I'll start it before then. So basically, there's these ravenous monsters that are running wild right now in the world. And there is only one city that is deemed a safe zone from these monsters. So there's this girl who is on a journey to find her mom. And her mom happens to be in that city that's deemed a safe zone. And they don't let outsiders in. So she is now working to find a way in this city to be able to locate her mom and reconnect with her. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty interesting. Uh, what makes you want to come up with that idea? Like, how did you come up with that story? <laughs> it's a very good question. So this this started like two years ago. You know, at that point, I had been working on like my main storyline for One Nation. You know, for about four years, and I didn't really have a way that I knew how to properly introduce my story to the world. So I was like, oh shoot, like I gotta come up with something. And then I started seeing, I started doing more research. Like a lot of the manga that I looked up to, they created one shots like Naruto's Masashi Kishimoto. He did a Naruto one shot. Um, Koi Hirokoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia, he did a My Hero Academia one shot where they created a story that has similar elements, but it was totally different from like those animes that we see today. So I connected with a mentor and he really like walked me through the process of creating a one shot. So I had to come up with a whole different storyline that had nothing to do with my main story. And that's what I choose to present to the world as like the first taste of One Nation. Nice, nice. So where can we find your book? I mean, your comic. Or, okay, which one do you prefer? Yeah. Is it comic, manga? I, mean, I prefer I manga because like that's what that's what inspired me. So I I, I do prefer manga because that's that's what I see myself as, as a, as a mangaka. And... You can uh, it's it's the link is directly in my bios, which are uh, my social media is this gifted cuddle everywhere, and you know the link to be able to check out One Nation is directly in all of my bios on my social medias. Gifted cuddle, that I just like that username. Like, how did you come up with that? Like, why you refer to yourself as gifted cuddle? So I used to, I used to make music, and like. My name used to like when I first started my my like artist name was was Kid Cutting. Cutting's my last name. Kid Cuddy at that time was like one of my biggest influences as an artist. But I was like, that's too close to Kid Cuddy. So right. I like I gotta come up with like with like something different. And um the cuddle name just came about where you know I just kind of just played around my last name and I was like, okay, I can replace the T's with D's and add an O. And I was like, cuddle was cool. And then with the gifted part, that's that's you know, humbly how I see myself as as a gifted individual. And um one of my old basketball coaches and and trainers, his his IG handle is truly gifted. And I love that. And I was like, man, I can put gifted and then cuddle. And it's a way of paying homage to him too, because he's made like such a profound impact on my life. Wow, that's life that's a really nice story. You know, and why uh, why did you uh, transition out of music? 
the the honest answer is I wasn't able to find a way to really monetize in that industry. That's that's the transparent answer. And yeah, people can say, you know, well, you sh you shouldn't just be doing it for money. And that's not the only reason I was doing it. However, it's like, you know, you got to you got to make a living. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, right. you got to you got to just be real. So I just felt for the time that I was investing in the money for studio sessions and buying beats and, you know, all these other type of different things that you got to do if you're really like taking your music serious. It just the end investment like wasn't working out. Maybe if I'd have stayed consistent with it, because I feel like I I've now learned tools that probably would have helped me. Maybe maybe like it would have started to do stuff, but I don't regret it honestly. I I feel like I was already balancing too juggling too much at one time, and it's mm -hmm. like it's, it's either gonna be music or it's gonna be manga, and I and I and I chose manga. Well, that's good. I mean, it's never too late, you know, if you want to yeah. go back to music. Is any of your music on any platforms? Like, can we pull you up on Spotify? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I got I got projects on Spotify, Apple. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I've released, a, I'll say, a good amount of content. I mean, SoundCloud, you know, from my early day stuff. And it, it it's, it's something that's going to forever hold a dear place in my heart. I just... I just knew it was time to it was time to transition on to the next thing. And maybe one day, like when one nation takes off, you know, the good thing is what I always tell myself is look at all the original soundtracks you'll be able to have because of all the music you created. <laughs> that's see, that's perfect. Cause I think another person I interviewed, uh, she Miss Steele, she has a soundtrack along with her novel flashback oh, that's dope. okay so, so, so like that is a possible route like it's it you'd be surprised like how you could combine multiple interests into one thing and make something like really fire so um you know it like i said it's never too late and you can always like you know uh fuse all your loves you know what i mean i, I get what you're saying like juggling a lot because like i have to do that as well with teaching and then sometimes I have to take a break from my publication you know to do my job as a teacher oh, so I... like you know what I mean so like I totally get where you're coming from but it sounds like you're doing amazingly you're like saving the environment and helping people save money with like solar power you're even like creating your own manga uh and just being the representation that we need out here today so Thank you so much for reaching out and being on this show. And like, and I wish you the best of luck. So y'all make sure that you go to his social media, go to the links in his bio. Um, your book is out for sale right now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll show like what the cover look like, but uh oh. the cover of my manga. Yeah, the uh link is in my bio. You're able to go purchase a physical or digital copy right now. I truly appreciate like you having me on like this mean the world to me it really made my day and you know to everybody out there you know whatever you're working on in, in life right now just continue to pursue at it you know it's mm -hmm. gonna be adversity it's gonna be different things that that happens you'll have some turbulence however the individuals that are able to stay focused on what's really important those are the individuals that always reach their goals for sure and that's i couldn't say it better myself and see how see how you guys glowed from this conversation. I'll make sure to catch you guys next time. All right, bye. Thanks.